How are you guys? Welcome back to Wargaming China and today we're back at Barzi Bridge because I was a bit lazy, I didn't want to reset the table up and I thought, ah, oh, I can play another another scenario on the same table. Now, if you remember last week, the last video I was talking about this bridge and um, the Chinese having seized it by the 14th, secured it by the 14th, according to which offer you read. But then um, other accounts of um, still struggling for this bridge in and around this bridge up until the 17th. Now that's because uh, the Japanese are deploying their, their flying columns. And um, although it's a counteractor to retake their former defensive positions, it's not an attack outside of their um, settlement boundary, even though that's probably illegal. So again, this is going to be an eight turn game with uh, the Japanese attacking to try to retake Barzi's bridge. Now, um, you see there I have a motorcycle company, a 14 75mm regimental gun, um, some artillery observers, uh, <clears throat> Vickers Cross the Armoured Car, a Hargo tank, HQ and another truck, uh, truck of a, a company of SNLF truck born, and another company of SNLF motorbike born. And how I'll do the games, I'll give them eight turns to get to the bridge. And for the Chinese defensive positions, I'm purely going to use the any any mining mo system. So there might be huge gaps in the Chinese defense line. We'll see. Um, so as we go up the road there. Um, all the buildings are now all the buildings are now ruins, and um, the I've reduced the Chinese artillery to one seventy five millimeter battery. Uh, the Chinese forces are defending with an infantry battalion, observers for a seventy five millimeter millimeter battery, the focus battery. Um, a pack 36 with uh, a horse toe and on the, the dice will decide whether they get the 20 millimeter Ulicon. Um, I'll take it for eight turns. Uh, it should be a quick game. And again, this is just to show how the uh, fighting around Baizi Bridge was still ongoing, even though it was in Chinese hands. Um, I'm gonna play this today, it's a lovely game. I'm not gonna do a an epilogue on this game. Um because it's just gonna be such a fast game. And it's you know, it's the same basic table set up as last time. The rules are gonna be the same for artillery with both sides. Um but this time the Japanese are only on radio to call in their fire support. And the Chinese, as I said, they have reduced to just uh, two 75 millimeter guns in support. The Japanese will also be getting some um, air support. And the Chinese, that the Japanese air support by, by the 16th, 17th, has realized that all of the anti-tank, anti-aircraft guns are protecting the artillery. So this game will represent how that the Chinese do have artillery support, but it can, but it's it's not it it it's not going to give them fire support throughout the whole game. It'll be intermittent and sporadic. Um, even though the Chinese had plenty of artillery in the city, around the city, in order to um, prevent it being annihilated by Japanese air attack. It, it's, it's, it didn't fire very often, it, you know, it, it would fire in the mornings or if there was heavy cloud above it might fire but the idea of it giving constant air support, uh, fire support to the ground forces just didn't happen because uh, the, the Japanese air support was too punishing. It was just, just punished the Chinese artillery too much and um, As the, as the um, battle progressed, the um, the bark of Chinese artillery would become heard less and less and less. 
Okay, that's all for me now. Quick five minute video. Um, I did this for the guys who liked the last video. And um, I hope you press like again. I hope, I hope you, you can see that, you know, the effort of putting a table together doesn't just necessarily have, the effort of putting a table together doesn't just necessarily mean you're only gonna get one game out of it. Um, so there we go. Thanks for watching. See ya.